Mm. That's so weird. Dude. Wait, what? We planned a character like Eddie Murphy? In the OG Resident Evil 1? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you... What? There was gonna be a guy that <laughs> was gonna be like Eddie Murphy? Get out of town. No, shut the front door. What? <laughs> that kind of that would have been funny actually that would have just taken a lot of the seriousness out of the game even though the the game had awful acting i mean everybody knows that but yeah that that would have been hilarious to <laughs> some black guy <laughs> that's like eddie murphy like they were going for that character in in the mansion can you imagine <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> You know what? Now I kind of want to see that. That's actually really interesting. We planned a character like Eddie Murphy. What? Uh, uh, All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to an interview that Jun Takuichi did with Shinji Mikami. Now, for those of you that don't know, Shinji Mikami is the creator of Resident Evil, and Jun Takuichi has actually been the executive producer on the games um, since, I think, Resident Evil 5. Um, but yeah, he's basically been the one that's been overseeing everything uh, with the new games, like including Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 8, and I'm pretty sure the remake. So Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting interesting they're basically going to be talking about you know their time working together um since i had no idea but i only watched a little bit of the video but jun takuchi has actually been working at capcom since 1991 so he's he's definitely an og producer you know and especially him working you know alongside shinji now i do want to mention that shinji mikami's um last game that he worked on for capcom was resident evil 4 but i do want to mention also that jun takuchi is still working at capcom right now so this interview is actually on the Japanese Biohazard um, channel but for some reason it's unlisted so I am going to leave a link to the video to the full video in the description so make sure to check that out but in any case let's get started. Yeah, so Jin Takeuchi, Capcom Division 1 executive producer, joined Capcom in 1991 and is responsible for overseeing the development of Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village. So yeah, that's exactly what I mentioned. Uh, prior to this video, I had no idea that he had been working at Capcom for such a long time. But I think that's really cool because it just shows, you know, he's definitely an OG producer. So that's awesome. That's really cool. So I, that, wow, so this bar is actually called Bar Kendo. That's awesome. That is so cool. You can see all the guns in the back. <laughs> That's so cool. That's the thing that I really liked about Japan is that they have a lot of these, you know, themed bars or themed restaurants, which is very cool. You know, I almost went to a Resident Evil themed restaurant that had just opened up when I was visiting in Japan. This was like a long time ago, but um it's probably, I don't even think it's there anymore. But anyways, yeah, it was just packed. Like, you had to actually get a reservation. So I, I didn't go inside, but I was outside of it. But funny enough. But yeah, that's that's something that's really cool is those theme, you know, cafes or theme bars. But yeah, I didn't know that this place existed. I definitely want to check it out if it's available to the public. That's awesome. There's Shinji Mikami. Yeah, so this footage was recorded in May 2022. Yeah, so president of Tango Gameworks joined Capcom in 1990. So I didn't know that either. I knew he's been there. He was there working way before he worked on the project of Resident Evil. But that's interesting that now we know for sure, right, that he's been there since 1990 in Capcom. Well, he was there. As mentioned before, he's not working there anymore since his departure after Resident Evil 4. But yeah. <笑>あの、何年ですか<笑><笑> Yeah, that's the other thing I want to mention is that in the title of this video, it does say part one. So this is they're obviously working in the Biohazard channel. They're working with Resident Evil Portal, which, you know, 
um, is on the Capcom site. But yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see part two, part three. Are they going to bring in other, you know, OG Resident Evil guys to the channel? That's that's going to be awesome. But if they do, you'll definitely want to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be doing a reaction on all of these as they come out. So yeah, I'm really excited and pumped about this. Anyways, let's go back to the interview. <laughs> ちょうね、今日なんかウェブチームの方が話題カードいろいろ用意してくれてるんで、ま、その辺喋りながらで、ちょっと一枚引きますね。はいはい。はい、一つ目。今だから言えるバイオハザード制作のぶっちゃけト
<laughs> that's like Eddie Murphy. Like they were going for that character in in the mansion. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> you know what now i kind of want to see that that's actually really interesting we planned a character like eddie murphy what まあ、イベントのカットシーンとかでバカやるボケてくれるっていうのがコンセプトだったんだけど、まあ、冷静になって見積もり取ったら真っ先に切れたね。やりたかったけど、今はプロマ。Dude, <笑> what? I kind of want to see that now. They should bring that character back just for, you know, just for shits and giggles. Dude, that's hilarious. Dude, what? That just blows my mind. So Resident Evil could have been like an Eddie Murphy in the mansion or something like that or Eddie Murphy in Raccoon City because they said that in the game or their cutscenes that they wanted to make, they wanted him to go and sell his police gun, issued gun and get, you know, buy he'd, he'd have to buy another gun. Is that what they just mentioned? Yeah, something along those lines. So that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> he would just be saying comedic stuff throughout the zombie part. You know, didn't that kind of reminds me of uh, Resident Evil? What's it called? Apocalypse, the second uh, movie. Didn't they have that comedian? What's his name? Sinbad. Funny enough, we actually did get a character like that. Was not related to the games, obviously, since you know the Paul W. S. Anderson movies are completely different from the games. But that's funny because you know we did have a comedian around. <laughs> in the resident evil kind of universe uh but that's that's funny that's hilarious i guess it would have been like that right <laughs> dude that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> that's いつチームにアナウンスしようっていうのありましたね。で、チームにアナウンスしたらもう復活しづらいじゃん、もう1回。うん、そうでしたね。Right around the time we made Dino Crisis, a panic horror game with dinosaurs released in 1999. Yeah, dude, Dino Crisis. I for those of you that know the channel, that's what basically got me into Resident Evil was Dino Crisis. That's a game I played when I was just what I think it was like five or four <laughs> such, such a good game such a classic that's the games that i grew up with you know dino crisis and then obviously i transitioned to resident evil one once i got a little older but yeah those games are awesome i love those games <laughs> yeah Hi. good times <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. すげえシンプル。怖い。自分がまず怖いと思うこと。で、それを手にする人が目にする人が怖い。うん。うん。で、お客さんだけ怖い。俺怖くない。うん。で、俺怖い。お客さん怖くない。多分あると思うんだけど
we're still playing it. But, you know, uh, that's something that he mentioned in the other video that I reacted to with the Silent Hill creator and as well as uh, Shinji Mikami, their discussion on uh, horror and uh, how Shinji Mikami, he didn't really want to go full, full, you know, scary horror in Resident Evil 1. You know, he was afraid that he'd lose a lot of the public's, uh, the public in getting them to play Resident Evil since it would be too horror, it would be too niche of a subject. And so that's why, you know, he kind of eased up on a lot of mechanics that he wanted to implement or other stuff um, like that. You know, that's why, you know, for me personally, there that's one of the reasons why I've always liked Resident Evil is mostly because of that. You know, that it's not really like a paranormal kind of a game. You know, even though with Resident Evil 7, they kind of they kind of tried to make it paranormal, but have a scientific explanation of it that's one of the reasons why i didn't like resident evil 7 because it wasn't just you know this is paranormal no it's like this is paranormal but this is the reason why or you know what i mean so i, I i'll have to go more in depth with with my opinions on resident evil 7 but in another video but yeah going back to the topic right or even like resident evil village um uh, that whole house beneviento um scene you know that whole that whole part you know it was kind of felt like a nightmare and it's like, okay, I get that this is trying to be paranormal, but then they scientifically explained that the reason why, you know, Ethan was having all those visions is because he had, he was exposed to the flowers. And so again, not something I really liked. I'm, I'm not a really big uh, horror kind of a guy, but, uh, but that, yeah. So I, I think there's that distinction, right? And that's something that I go over in the other, the other interview, um, that, that Shinji Mikami did with the Silent Hill creator. So going back to what I was saying, that's why I think this is actually a very good question because I, I, you know, to, to get to know what his, um, answers are to, you know, to what is horror, what does it mean for him? And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Shinji in that other interview with the Silent Hill creator, I think he did also mention that he wanted to make a scary game or was that Hideo Kojima? I don't know. I, I think I think that might have been Hideo Kojima. I'm kind of getting confused. Because <laughs> it seems everybody wants to make like the new style horror game that really, you know, scares people. But no, no, no. Actually, no, I did. I think it was both of them, actually. Yeah, I did hear an article talking about Shinji and as well as Hideo Kojima, who, if you don't know, Hideo Kojima was the guy that made the Metal Gear Solid franchise and was also was going to work on the new Silent Hill reboot that 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 got canned, which was a shame. A lot of people were really looking forward to that, but yeah. So yeah, very interesting, very interesting. あ、ね、新しいアイデアを思いついた時に誰が先にやるのかなっていうのはあって。うん、Oh, Koshi Na Nakanishi was the game director of Resident Evil 7. Yeah, so I didn't know that information. And like I've mentioned several times on this channel, I am not a fan of Resident Evil 7. I did not like the, the, whole, the whole aspect of it. I thought it was the most un- Resident Evil game out of all the Resident Evils. Yeah, like that and Resident Evil Zero. I don't that I, I didn't yeah, I didn't I just did not like it. It just did not feel like a Resident Evil game. And that's just my opinion. You could disagree. And I know a lot of people will disagree because a lot of people love Resident Evil 7. But for me, no, I just I didn't really like it. I didn't like the whole tone of it. So I think this is very interesting that he's gonna be talking about this discussion that they had with the game director, uh Koshi Nakanishi. で、その時は何でしょうね。ちょうどうちの会社たまにあの引っかかるはそのなんですかこうマーケティングとかあのユーザーの要望に沿ったゲーム作りをしなきゃいかんみたいななんかそういうたまたまこう流れが来ててああな
down. No, that's not what people wanted. I do think it's a little weird that he said that Capcom or the big companies are really focused on giving people what they want, yet they were really trying to push online games and DLC and microtransactions, which a lot of gamers do not want. So <laughs> DLC is fine, but microtransactions are making online games, uh, especially if you're a single player uh, company. You know, that's something that's that could prove that that has proven to be quite quite bad on company like for example i'm just thinking on the top of my head right now is bioware bioware is known for single player games and then ea was making them and forcing them to make anthem which was like an online game you know that that you know that didn't that proved to be quite quite disastrous for bioware and you know same thing with if we're looking at resident evil 3 remake resident evil 3 remake would look like it was rushed you know they skipped a whole lot of areas that they should have included in the game and on top of that what we got we didn't even get dlc so we've actually received dlc ever since resident evil 5's release but resident evil 3 remake all we got was just bonus costumes just one bonus costume right for each of the characters um, and then that's it. Most of the DLC went towards Resident Evil Resistance. And I know that a lot of the Resident Evil community would agree with me in, in me saying that, you know, Resident Evil Resistance kind of sucked. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a game that you could play again and again. You know, like I know there's people out there that like it, but, it, you know, if I had a choice between having Resident Evil Resistance or Resident Evil 3 Remake, you know, to be actually made, you know, in the proper way, like in a better way that actually didn't exclude a lot of the game's, you know, areas that the original had, um, I think a lot of people would pick Resident Evil 3 Remake. And also, you know, they could have released like a DLC releasing like the Clock Tower section or other sections of Resident Evil 3, you know, making uh, Nemesis be a part of the game a lot more like how Mr. X was a part of the game in Resident Evil 2 Remake. And so, you know, that's that's definitely, I'm not, I'm not saying that Jun Takeuchi is wrong. What I'm saying is, is that it's funny how the Capcom executives, you know, the guys that are all, you know, that are just working at the company, at these huge gaming companies, they were forcing this to 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 their workers and they were telling them that the reason they want to push this stuff is because they want to give people what they want when that's not what people wanted if anything that's what the executives wanted they wanted to make more money you know making everything like a life service game like a Fortnite game just because that brings in the big bucks but it's like no nobody wants that a lot of gamers are sick of that so i think that's funny how how he's just he's just explaining that that's how they they brought those ideas towards the teams. You know, they told them, yeah, the, we want to give people what they want. But it's like, no, no, that's that's definitely not what happened. The companies just wanted to get, they wanted what they wanted. You know what I mean? They just wanted more cash. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I definitely, it, it's interesting to see that that's what they were telling their workers. But yeah, but I'm not denying what Jun Takeuchi is saying. うちの鈴本会長緑に見かねたんでしょうね。なんかやってもやっぱりうまいもがかってけへんっていうのが聞いてて、この忘れもしないんですよ。1月4日仕事始めの日に会長のとこ呼ばれて、セブン苦労してる
that's I'm so glad that Resident Evil didn't fall into that trap. I know that they still they probably were still forced that to do that, especially like we just mentioned with Resident Evil Resistance or Resident Evil Reverse, you know, but um but yeah, that's yeah, I'm I'm glad. Even though I'm not a fan of Resident Evil 7, I didn't I I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I I'm glad that they stuck to their guns and said, "No, we're going to make a single player game." あの、<laughs> yeah, I didn't like any of that. I've said that multiple times. If, you know, and that's that's one of the things that did, that I did not like that was not explained well at all was why Ethan's hand was always cut off and they didn't come to that explanation until Resident Evil 8 and it kind of felt cheap. I didn't like how they had they came up with an explanation and it's like, "Oh yeah, by the way, you remember what happened in the previous game?" This is the reason why. It's because he was infected. Yeah, that to me was super lame. I did not appreciate that. I thought that was just really dumb. I didn't like that. I didn't like how, yeah, it, he says it was really funny, but to be honest, I thought it was so lame. But going back to what I was saying, but if Resident Evil 7 was actually the first game that you ever played, and you played other Resident Evil games after that, you're gonna see there's, there's a complete difference. There's a shift because like I said, Resident Evil 7, did not feel like a Resident Evil game. It was so different, you know? And so, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to make my another video talking about my full thoughts on Resident Evil 7 and why I don't like it. But again, that's just my opinion. That's fine. But anyways, let's continue. <laughs> <笑><笑><笑> 感覚<笑> うちうじの仕業イベントシーンがあって開けたらくっついてんすよ。で、これ別にあ、誰か治療塗ったとかって治療したんかなって俺は言うんすけど、わざとなんか敵の女の子が手首一生懸命ホッチキスで止めてるシーン作ろうよ
the fact that they gave us an explanation Resident Evil 8, that still bothers me to this day. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> なんでこんな家なんだよって言うんですよ、主人公が。おかしいだろ、この家って。言ってあげることで、なんかこう、逆に一周させて、なんか面白みになるんじゃないっていうのを。そうね、あの、バージメン作ってる時に、笑いちょ